I'm Dylan. And I'm Keon. This is Trust Your Doctor, that podcast where we don't know where we are because this week we watched The Bells of St. John. Written by Stephen Moffat. Directed by Colm McCarthy. And aired on March 30th, 2013. Getting right into it with The Bells of St. John, which I, before this story, completely forgot what it was about. <laughs> yeah, this it is kind of a forgettable story <laughs> uh, in terms of the production, too. Or so I hear, because like last week, I didn't look anything up. Well, this one was even less than last week, although I actually think I came up with quite a bit for last week. This week basically came down to Moffat was like, I wanted to write a story about Wi-Fi. <laughs> Wi-Fi was everywhere. Again, this is kind of a uh, Stephen Moffat does Russell T moment, because this reminded me a lot of Idiot's Lantern. Yeah, bringing it into the modern age with the Wi-Fi instead of TV. And he was like, it's not supposed to be, uh, it, he, he said it wasn't supposed to be trying to say any sort of message about how Wi-Fi is bad or technology is bad. He just wanted to use Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> he just wanted to use it. <laughs> as as the, 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 the villain's plan, I guess. <sighs> so. <laughs> All right. All right. I mean, you can definitely read this as like a parable a warning against... Oh, easily. Yeah. Easily. Whether Stephen Moffat wanted you to do so or not. Well, because it starts off with a guy going, listen to me, if you see a weird Wi-Fi network, don't connect to it. <laughs> Which is just a general, like, good rule to follow. Yeah, don't connect to Wi-Fi networks, you don't know. <laughs> I mean, there's a reason why, they, they, you know, the, it doesn't have a password, so, uh, you know, <laughs> you know. But yeah, so... The, the general gist of this is that people around the world have been finding on their Wi-Fi list just uh, a series of symbols. I don't really know what this is. Well, we see this voiceover, which I thought was an extremely clunky way to introduce this episode. <laughs> it's not... Did I just say we see this voiceover? We see this guy giving an explanation of what's happening. Yeah, it's, it's, it's almost... You think it's like his vlog at first yeah. or something like that. He's like, if you see this, and he holds up a, a sign with the symbols drawn on, he's like, don't click it, because then they'll be in your computer, and if they choose you, they upload you, and you die! And yeah, so it's like, kind of like your, your government, you know? <laughs> in your computer. There was that... So the government that, doesn't upload you to no. the internet and kill you. Yeah. Well, there's that British... Secret who there was she's just, I forget her name, but she was like the Edward Snowden of Britain who like warned the world that like every computer made after like two thousand eight or nine or something was compromised and the, the the government, you know, was looking at everything you do or Yeah, there was that entire thing debacle. I mean, I just want to know why the government's spending so much money <laughs> looking at literally everyone. That seems like a, a horrid waste of money. <laughs> be honest here. <laughs> Never mind the privacy concerns. This is <laughs> this is monetary. We could be spending this money elsewhere, like education. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it something is, like beneficial it, it, it society. Is it is education. You know, people, people watching people, people being educated as to what people are doing, what they're up to, what they're saying, and in one day, what they're right. thinking. Great. Anyway, it just seems like a general thing that if you saw this strange series of symbols on your Wi-Fi list, you wouldn't click it. But apparently, thousands of people have. All across the world. And frankly, I want to know how they built the infrastructure to give the entire world Wi-Fi. Because that's... <laughs> they, could have, they could have literally just done this and come out publicly with it. And they would have been hailed as, like, superheroes. And then no... Yeah. And, and, and literally, more people would connect to their amazing free Wi-Fi that they offer to the entire world if it was, like... Yeah, people are trying to do this. People want to upload their consciousness to computers. Like, um, what's his name? Elon Musk is a very big proponent of this. <laughs> and well, people are like 2050, you know, by, by whatever. I don't know what the date is, but they're like, it's going to happen. Well, I mean, sometimes I wonder if Elon Musk just has so much money that at this point he's just like throwing it at whatever he's got. <laughs> like, consciousness upload, done. Surveillance, Surveillance <laughs> done. Tunnel digging, done. <laughs> If I had the kind of money Elon Musk did, I'd be people would be coming to me and be like, "What? You want to build a store that just sells ice cream cones without ice cream? Done. <laughs> I'll fund it." 
Doesn't Elon Musk like still sleep in the same bed that he did when he was like five or something? I don't know. He like lives in the house that he was like born in, like not even his home house, like that he was literally born in or something stupid like that. I don't know. I just know that if I had his kind of money, I'd be th- like th- <laughs> basically throwing it at things <laughs> or donating it to lots of charities. J.K. Rowling was the first author to be considered a billionaire based on earnings from her books, and then lost billionaire status because she donated so much money to charity. That is a fun huh. fact for you. Huh. It's really interesting. So then we get the title sequence. Then we get the dog. Uh, we get a monk racing into a monastery. It's like the bells of St. John are ringing. Unfortunately, not the monk. <laughs> Bring back when's, the monk. When's the monk coming back in the reboot? I actually think characters There's, like the monk and the Rani would be uh, kind of fun to bring back in a reinterpreted fashion in the reboot. Yeah, I think so too. And, and that might be a discussion to, to sort of just touch on now is like they bring back like the great intelligence, but not the celestial toy maker and like the Rani and the monk. And I mean, I think of all those, the Rani is the one I most would like to see because the Rani was just like, she didn't care about anything. <laughs> she was just completely amoral, like, scientist. is like, I'm going to get my science done. I don't care if I have to kill people to do it. It's like, it doesn't affect me. Which is, like, a change from a lot of the villains we get in the show, which are like, world domination, kill people, mayhem. A lot of the villains we get are explicitly evil, whereas the yeah. Rani was always just like, the doctor was just kind of getting in the way. And yeah. the monk, too, was like, yeah, he was evil, but, like, his whole shtick was that he <laughs> messed with history and changed things, and I think that... Especially in Stephen Moffat's era where, like, we have so much of this time travel becoming a big thing. Like, would, the monk yeah. would have been an interesting character to bring back. Yeah. But unfortunately, the, you know, Moffat and, and the, you know, the rest of the crew had other Yeah, instead we bring back the great intelligence, <laughs> yeah. which isn't bad. I mean, I liked the great intelligence in the two stories we got with it in the classic yeah, show. Yeah, as did I. As did I. It was at least they're not bringing back like the, the crotons or something. Yeah, at least the great intelligence the was dominators. a villain who reoccurred in the classic show at remember, least once. Remember the dominators? <laughs> <laughs> remember the chumblies? <laughs> <laughs> or like I don't know, just those weird stories the from Murka? early Doctor Who. <laughs> I can't. I mean, I don't think you can forget the Murka, the Murker, or whatever it is. The Merka. Merka. Well, I don't know. British people, like, don't pronounce, like, the final spelt, R's in a word. Spelt M-Y-K-R-A, so. Yeah. M-Y-R-K-A, I know. I know I've made that mistake. Actually, I'll take that back. It's not that British people do that. It's that Americans <laughs> don't do it. Every other, like, type of English speaker around the world does. Yep. But. Did you ever read that article that one time, though, that said that an, an American accent is closer to what a British accent sounded like when the colonies split off and declared independent than what a present-day British accent sounds like? Oh, that's Yeah, no, that's really interesting. Yeah. Huh. Found that pretty interesting one time. Someone did, like, a whole bunch of analysis, and they're like, oh, yeah, American yeah. accent's closer to what the British people sounded like back then than wow. the British accent is right now. Huh. <clears throat> Actually, some Americans do extend the final R. Um, well, a lot in the in eastern the seaboard and the south, yeah. If you're South African, then you just get really lazy with your consonants. That's how you do a South African accent. So what even happens? Well, the, the doctor then goes to his TARDIS. Oh, right. Yeah. And, and that's... there's a telephone. He's like, that's not supposed to happen. He picks up the telephone and he's like, how'd you get this number? And she's like, the woman in the shop gave it to me. He's like, what woman in the shop? He's like, the woman in the shop. Remember this moment. Huh. Another throwaway line in Doctor Who that comes back to haunt you. <laughs> and Okay, so uh, did you get... I didn't get the bells of St. John was going to be the TARDIS phone ringing. No, I didn't get it yeah. until it zooms in on the St. John ambulance yeah. logo on the TARDIS. So yeah. The bells of St. John. Ha, ha, ha. Very funny, Moffat. You think you're so clever. There's another like pun in, in that same line where the doctor calls the TARDIS his mobile phone. Yeah, later on when he lands <laughs> yeah. in front of Tali's house, it's my mobile phone. She's like, yeah, sure. And he's like, it's a surprisingly accurate description. Yeah. But um, but yeah, so Clara is, she's kind of doing the same thing that she uh, was in the Victorian era. She's kind of, she's a babysitter. Yeah. Which this this also, I think, reinforces my theory that she's being reincarnated, like, out of order. Um, in the sense that, like, you think, 
a, a lot of like traditional reincarnation stories say that like you know no matter when you're reincarnated you do the same thing in your life or whatever yeah or like your life is gonna is gonna follow what your previous incarnations were just in maybe a different way because of a different era he has difficulty recognizing Clara from her voice, which is odd because I think that of all the people on the show, she actually has a rather distinct one. And his initial meeting with her, uh, at, at least for the doctor, I don't know if this is a ro- river song <laughs> situation where I don't know what's going on, but the, her their initial meeting was was only through voice. Yeah, and he didn't recognize her voice in the snowman, but he only, he figures it out when he sees the gravestone and Clara Oswin Oswald. And he's like, you know, I thought I recognized the voice, but I couldn't place it. And he's like, now I know. And in this story, he doesn't recognize her voice till she gets the Wi-Fi password from the kid she's watching and uses "Run, you clever boy, and remember" as the as the mnemonic to remember the password. Right. He's like, what and, did you just say? She's like, run, you clever boy. And remember, and he immediately gets in the TARDIS and materializes outside her house. Yeah, and this was strange to me. I mean, this is 2013. And like she doesn't know how to how to log into Wi Fi. Like oh, and she, she's like I, young. She's twenty four yeah, according 24. to the book. Yep. And I mean, I would get if this took pl- if this happened in like you know series one or something like two thousand like you know two thousand five. Like I would get it. like someone doesn't know how to log into Wi Fi in like oh five oh six. Like sure, you probably still have a wired internet connection or, or something like that. Yeah. I, but like twenty thirteen, I don't know. There's some kind of disconnect going on there. Then again, she there is that line later on which kind of justifies it of like she's really not into computers and she's never like really cared about computers and stuff like that. Yeah, but still. Yeah. She clicks some mysterious symbol Wi-Fi <laughs> and gets into her computer and then they start uploading her, but but not until she's talked to the doctor and he's like, don't you remember? It's me. It's the doctor. And she's like, I don't know who you are. And he's like, Clara, it's me. You're Clara. I'm the doctor. Come on. Surely you remember. Like there's... Come on. There's actually a, a moment earlier on where um, one of the kids she's babysitting is reading a book called Summer... Summer in the something? So, yeah, something. Summer... Guess who it's written by. <laughs> Guess who? <laughs> Pond. Amelia, Amelia Pond. Williams. Oh right. oh, right, right. It was Amelia Williams. Let her go. Yeah. <laughs> Let her this, go. This book is... Kind of like the Melody Malone book in that the, actually um, the Melody Malone story I found out what had a, a prologue which was actually published. It wasn't mm. the actual book itself. Didn't but, know that. But this I, I believe this book was actually published. Like the book wow. itself that they read in the story. This was the book that they decided yeah. to publish. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yep. So you can go and and read this book. No thanks. I don't know. I have no idea what it's about. Uh, it seems like it takes place in the past. Seems like uh, like an Anne of Green Gables slash Pride and Prejudice knockoff <laughs> based on the cover art. <laughs> and I'm judging a book by its cover and everyone tells you, don't judge a book by its cover, but what do you do when you go to a bookstore? You pick up the book with the coolest cover, so. Yeah, sure. It's true, I, though. I, I guess, yeah. I mean, I don't know. When you When you start reading, like, to the extent that that you that read, I, yeah. I, I didn't want to say it because it's it's in some way like a humble brag, yeah. But but it's like you don't go to bookstores. You just because I don't know. Just it's like you just get Amazon. them as che- you just get them as cheaply as you can possibly find them. eBay, yeah. Amazon or, started as an online bookstore. Fun fact. Huh, I didn't know that actually. And not only that, the the Amazon backend when it was just a bookseller whoever the CEO was, I think it was Bezos, offered it to Borders at, huh. as their online store, but Borders like, no, 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 we're fine with the brick and mortar. As you now know, Borders is closed <laughs> yeah. and Amazon is a multi-billion dollar company. <laughs> so, the doctor, here's Amy, uh, Clara, sorry, collapse. Whoa. It's an interesting slip. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was thinking of the book still, yeah. Amelia. And he runs inside and finds out she's being uploaded Right. Into the net, I guess. Right, and we're uh, interspersed through all this is is scenes of like this, this is corporation Kit, Kitwick, Kitwell. Kit, I didn't know anyone's Kits, name here. Kislet, Kislet, got it. And she, I mean, as she, my takeaway as from this as character, go, she's uh... yeah, she like, I'm I'm disappointed that she plays a one off character. 
because she could easily I mean we talk about like the Ronnie coming back she could like I could see her as the Ronnie yeah she could have done the Ronnie pretty easily I mean, actually. I know the I know the Ronnie was actually kind of a humorous character back in the classic show. Okay, well, maybe but that was... that's because the season in which the the seasons in which the <laughs> Ronnie appeared were some of the more humorous. <laughs> but she could definitely be like a, a serious, scary interpretation of the Ronnie. Yeah, I mean, she definitely could. And of course, I've spoiled the Ronnie doesn't come back. But that was one of the theories when Missy is introduced next season. Was people are like, oh, she could be the Ronnie. Obviously, that turned out to be false yeah. since as i've said already spoiled the ronnie doesn't come back but yeah and mm. I, know, I mean missy from what i know is is also more of a, a light-hearted kind of silly character from what i've i mean from what i don't know i don't know maybe it, she's like the 11th doctor in many ways maybe in the way she acts but not mm. in the things she does <laughs> stephen moffat's conception of missy was a dark mary poppins so well the master has always kind of been well well yeah yeah yeah, I would say so. The master's always been the dark doctor. That's why John Sim works so well, in my opinion. But that, anyway, that's another Sherlock Holmes connection that we can t- that we kind of touched on last week. Is the master was envisioned as the Moriarty yeah, right character, right? Who, as just, we all know from that pastiche, is just a figment of Sherlock's <laughs> imagination. Was actually just his math teacher. <laughs> well, I mean, that just goes to show you that, like, how influential Sherlock Holmes actually was, for for better or worse. Yeah, for better or worse. As you can tell, we're trying to avoid talking about the story because very little actually happens in the way of plot in this episode. But he saves Clara from being uploaded, uh, but she does get the computer knowledge downloaded into her brain that Kislet wanted installed when she was being uploaded, so she knows all about computers now. Right, and this is something we touched on last week, Is is, and I want to bring it up here because I think it's here as well, is that the episode like structure and pacing kind of feels more movie like now. And I know they've been trying to go for that movie like feel for the whole season. Yeah. But like I'm I'm getting it now where it's like there's there's a lot of Oh well, uh, you didn't get it in power of three <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of like rising action, falling action type stuff near the beginning. Mm-hmm. And then there's a big conflict at the end, kinda of like a movie. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well there are also a lot of filler scenes, like movies that tend to be too long and <laughs> for unnecessary reasons. Like the scene now where Kislet directs a plane to crash into the Doctor and Clara. Yeah, because they... you get this you get this moment between the Doctor and Clara where where you know the Doctor says he's protecting her and stuff and he's waiting outside her house and he sends a message to the the the, yeah. the group. I don't know what they're called actually. But uh, I don't know if they're ever named. Yeah. He sends a message, it's like, I'm, um, she's under my protection, uh, so you're not going to get her. Yeah. But then a, a plane crashes into... Or well, the plane just, doesn't crash. It doesn't crash. But the doctor drags yeah. Clara into the police box, and she's like, wow, it's big on the inside. He's like, I don't have time to explain. And it materializes inside the plane, which is an impressive feat of navigational skill <laughs> the doctor has never displayed before. You know, this, this thing is going to get real annoying if it's like Clara has to discover this the TARDIS every week and has to meet the Doctor every, every week. No, 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 no. This Clara is the one we follow for the, for the next okay. while. Okay. I'm going to brace you against that. <laughs> so you can at least go into the next story with clear expectations, not expecting Clara to be, like, lost. Yeah. And not know where she is. Yeah. Haha. Uh-huh. But the Doctor saves the plane from crashing by just pulling back on the yoke. So. Turns out anyone who's never touched a plane can just fly one without any training planes were designed to be pretty easy to fly yeah but i feel like if i was doing this instead of the doctor I, everyone would have died <laughs> just pull back on the yoke to go up push forward to go down <clears throat> easy the yoke controls all three axes pitch yaw and roll <laughs> you lost me <laughs> everyone would be dead <laughs> everyone would be dead <laughs> It's the three principal axes of motion. The motion in the ocean. <laughs> yeah, the, I mean, if there's, if this was an ocean, the plane would be in, in the ocean. It wouldn't be in the sky. <laughs> I'll just skip ahead to breakfast and I'll explain everything to you. Claude's so, like, all right, cool. They go eat breakfast on, like, the top of yeah. a skyscraper. <laughs> <laughs> on this, like, rooftop cafe in the middle of London. This really, like, 
bourgeoisie. Yeah. <laughs> but the doctor does this thing where he lands the TARDIS in the middle of a crowd and holds out his face like donations, donations for a magic trick to get money to pay for breakfast, I guess. Yeah. And this is uh, this is the next day, I believe. And Clara's yeah, like, we have next a, morning in a time machine. We have a time machine. And you decide to go to like twelve hours later, really? Yeah. And he's like, yeah. Are you tired? And she's like, yeah. And he's like, well, think about how they feel. They've been searching the whole night for us, and we just skipped the whole night. <laughs> um, oh, we we glossed the over the bike. the book, um, which the doctor finds in Clara's possession. I yeah. guess. I guess it's not her house. It's not. It's just the house of the kids she was staying in. Yeah. Who was staying with, I guess. Actually, there's another point I want to touch on is like the. I didn't like get necessarily what was actually going on because we see one of the characters from Amy's book. Oh, yeah. It's like they went into the book. No, the Spoonhead, they explain this, or the doctor says that it fed off of her subconscious and picked a form that she oh. was thinking about and she was thinking about the book. Oh. All right. Yeah, I, I didn't... And I, that's why that's why the Spoonhead later looks like the Doctor. Yeah, I, I thought, like, some Inception nonsense was going on here. It was like, they went in the book, but they're, like, not no, actually right. out... Stephen Moffat does Inception's coming up soon. <laughs> I, th- I thought they weren't out of the book. Like, at the end of the episode, it was like, well, the day is saved, but they're forgetting that they're, like, still inside the internet, which is also the book, which is, I don't know... Nope. I guess Just it's the not. spoonhead robot look like <laughs> yeah. the girl. All right. Yeah, they it's... take the motorbike to this rooftop cafe where they yeah. eat breakfast. And... Uh, yeah. Uh, just to kind of touch back, Clara also has this book of places that she wants to go or whatever. Right. And she's gone to some of them. She's gone to Canada. She brought back that leaf. No, I'm kidding. No, that leaf is a key plot it's, point it's next week. It's the first week. page of the book. And it's a key it's plot point next week. It's not a leaf, remember. It's not a leaf. It's, it's not a leaf. It's a According bomb. To the next week. No, it's, it's a not bomb. a bomb. It's not a bomb. <laughs> whenever someone says, I know this is a weird connection to make, but whenever someone says, like, that's not a blank, it's a blank, I think of that SpongeBob SquarePants episode where the guys are like, those aren't pies, they're they're bombs. <laughs> and then really? Squidward is like, I would have bought them if it was a pie. And he's like, oh, yeah, they're pies. <laughs> I think of that painting. It's not a pipe, you know? No. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a leaf. It's just a, an image of a leaf in a TV show. I mean, the whole point of that painting is it is not a pipe. It's a painting of a pipe. Yeah. But whatever. Maybe it's not even a painting of a pipe. Modern art. <laughs> yeah, throw some melted cheese against a wall and sell it for a <laughs> million dollars. <laughs> Did you hear about uh like uh Banksy's latest thing where like he, he held that auction and like yeah yeah shredded the piece as soon as someone bought it yeah except everyone was like wow that just makes it worth even more because now it's not only a Banksy painting it's a Banksy performance art piece now that you own it's like damn people aren't pissed <laughs> anyway at this cafe Clara starts hacking into find out where this group is located because the doctor wants to go put it put an end to it and and with her newfound knowledge of hacking computers yeah she uses facebook twitter and Flickr. <laughs> <laughs> what is it with doctor who and Flickr? Flickr maybe like flickers like kicking them back with a, <laughs> something To find out where they work, because apparently all these people posted where they work <laughs> on social media. This nefarious corporation that's uh, covertly uploading people's consciousness. Well, I questioned this plot point at the end of the story when none of those people even remembered they were there because they were all actually being controlled by the right. spoiler of the great intelligence. Right. So I was like, so why would they post on social why, media if they were being controlled? I mean, what, like, I don't think it controls them totally, um, but I mean, it has but the potential to, you know. Completely f- forget, though, what they were doing. The guy's like, how long have I been here? I just came to fix the toilets. Yeah, I mean, and, Kis- and Kislet has been controlled, we find out, or it's implied at the end, since she was a very small child, which is actually kind of dark and horrific. And sad. <clears throat> yeah. But. Uh, but anyway, Clara finds out where they are, like you mentioned, and in the shard. 
which is a big new building they were building. Yeah. But yeah, she gets uploaded by a spoonhead that looks like the doctor. Yeah, the doctor. This is actually this was actually kind of a creepy scene. I'll admit, the doctor comes back and and it's um, repeating the, it's it's reflecting you know Clara's mm-hmm. questions back. Yeah, and you you, you slowly realize like oh shoot it's not the doctor. <clears throat> This, that's also kind of a hint throughout the episode towards the great intelligence because the snowmen were doing that last week. Yeah. And they're kind of doing it again here. The, they don't they're reveal... fleshing the great intelligence out more than they did in the classic show. Yeah. Well, that's with I mean, that's what the reboot does. Kind of does. Was it, was it actually revealed that it was the great intelligence before the end? I don't even remember. Only at the end. Yeah. Okay. But the doctor then, you see him get on the motorbike and go to the shard uh, to shut this nonsense down. Right. And you think this is the real doctor? Yeah. Yeah. You're supposed to think yeah. it's the real doctor. I he, did. He I busts did. in through the window and Kislet goes up to her office and is like, look, you're not going to be able to do anything. We can't download her back into her body when she's been uploaded because she's, she's part of the system now and we'll have to download everybody. And the doctor's like, well, then you're going to do that. And she's like, well... Some people who don't have bodies would just die then if they don't have bodies to go back to. And he's like, well, you're going to do it anyway. Which means that that letter that we're going to add to the death count is <laughs> technically the doctor's doing. Yeah. I mean, I the reasoning, I think, behind this is like, it, you know, even death is better than living out your consciousness inside the computer or whatever. Not knowing in a living hell, I think the doctor calls it. Yeah. Not knowing where you are. And she's like, well, I'm not going to do that. And he's like, well, I'll give you some motivation. And she's like, how? And he's like... I'm still in the cafe. And she's like, wait, what? He's like, yeah, I don't hack people. I hack machines. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> the, I don't hack people. People hack people. The doctor. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> the doctor's the head turns around. reference there. But... A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> A little bit. The doctor's head turns around to reveal it's his spoon head and it uploads Kislet into the cloud. <laughs> and then we cut to like her subordinates. We we also find out that she can like hack her subordinates and increase, I yeah. guess, aspects of their character, which are like they're not like base ass best like happiness or sadness. They're things like paranoia, There's obedience. obedience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's actually a pretty dark joke early on in the episode where she's like, "Yeah, that that uh, guy we just talked to, yeah, kill him," and then he's like, "But he's going on vacation." She's like, "Oh, well, we don't want to be rude. Let him take his vacation. And then when he comes back, kill him." She increases his IQ as well, which is apparently a base character <laughs> stat you can increase. <laughs> so she gets uploaded and we cut to her subordinates looking at... Because there's a big screen or wall, I guess, of screens in the back of the kind of main area of this company right? that shows the faces of all the people who've been uploaded. And... And she sort of appears on one of the screens. Yelling, get me out of here, download me, download me. And they're like, well, we can't do that, can we? We'd have to download everyone, we can't do that. And they're like, nope. Then the doctor messes with the tablet and increases the obedience of the second in command to the max. And he's like, well, do what she says. So they download everybody back into their bodies. Right. And I forget, like, this somehow... Well, unit uh, shows up. Yeah, unit shows up in a in like a kind of a smaller role than you might want them to have. You know, I don't know. They just show up to take everybody in. Yeah, it's like I don't know, but I feel like you know, unit appears, so you want them to do something or nope, but they, yeah, <laughs> or like be a, not do because they do they do do something, but like you want them to be a bigger part of the episode, but they're not, and it's it's fine, I guess. Yeah, I mean it's it's fine. They're just there to to, to give a conclusion. To, yeah, to to resolve all of this. Like, oh shoot, how do we how do we solve this? <laughs> Throw unit in. So, Kislet factory. Well, she talks to the great intelligence. We find out the great intelligence was the one who was doing all this, and he's like, Ah, yes, I know the doctor beat me again, but that's okay. He beat me like three times now, four times now. Yeah, and it turns out the fifth time's the charm. You know, the power of five. five? <laughs> but Kislet touches the factory reset button. Which resets everybody back to the form, I guess, that they were in when they got controlled by the company. Right. And the the like we mentioned before, the most horrific of these is, well, we get some of the workers who we'd seen 
yeah. throughout the episode, and one of them... Second in command was just there to fix the toilets. Right. And some of them had obviously been there for a long time, but Kislet herself, her basically her entire life, uh, was yeah. under the control well, of Well, because we don't see what happens to her, but then the unit soldiers bust into her office like, stay where you are, and she's like, where's my mummy? She said she'd be right back. Is she coming back? Which was horrifying. Yeah. It kind that's of... A, that's a Stephen Moffat-like thing. Of, you know, the gas mask kid, where's my mummy? Yeah. They're like, But no, no, I mean, it's a generic But it's, it's an... It's, it's, I think it's a parallel to last week when Simeon had been right. controlling the intelligence or being controlled by the intelligence since he was a kid. Yeah. And he grew up and and then the doctor erases his mind at the end and, and he basically forgets most of his life with the great intelligence and is reverted back to being a kid as well, which we kind of skimmed over last week. Yeah, I mean, when you think about that in terms of like what happens after the story ends, this is a guy who missed most of his life. I mean, he's he's a grown man or arguably even an old man who... Who's extremely wealthy. Who, well, he's extremely wealthy, but like he, he, in his mind, I guess how this all works is he jumped from being a child to, to 50 years later. Well, at least he gets to skip the awkwardness of puberty. <laughs> At least you didn't Gotta have look to, on the bright sides here. I, I guess you didn't have to, from his perspective, work for any of his money. <laughs> Although it's Victorian England, so you got to wonder whether he did anyway, you know. Yeah, it's worse for Kislet, who goes from yeah. being a kid to being in the custody of unit. Yeah. <laughs> Five seconds later. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's incredibly dark and incredibly sad. And I was like, at the end of this episode, I was like, wow, I'm actually sad for her. Yeah, like this, that's actually kind of a really messed up thing to have happen to her. Yeah, I'm I'm really surprised at how emotional season seven has actually. I'm surprised it's actually like evoked emotions out of me in a way that Doctor <laughs> Who has never done in the past. Like first there was that guy in a town called Mercy who I somehow like cared for. For some reason you were like, <laughs> and, <laughs> and there was Angel Take Manhattan. The right out was was kind of touching. Mm. And now there's this, and Simeon as well to an extent. It's interesting. It's interesting. I mean, I, I don't really feel like they're doing anything different in terms of emotion than previous seasons. So maybe you're just loosening up as a person and it's not the or show being Or different. maybe the episodes are just like not as good. And so you focus in on like the emotional impact. I don't know. Maybe. I do think, these, I do think this is a solid episode. I, do I think, mean, I think this was all right. I think it's forgettable. And I yeah. think the this episode serves its purpose, which is introduced to introduce Clara, but beyond that, it doesn't do anything that I think is unique or, or super interesting. Like I said, it reminded me a lot of Idiot's Lantern, which was sucking people into television screens because a consciousness inside the television needed to feed on right. human minds, yeah. just like the great intelligence apparently needs to do in this story. Like, there's a lot of similarities there that are kind of hard to ignore. Yeah, yeah, Definitely. The doctor just, asks Clara yeah. to travel with him. Yeah, and we, she says, come back right. tomorrow at seven and ask me again. Maybe I'll say yes. He's like, all right, fine. I'm sure he just immediately skips <laughs> yeah. ahead right now. <laughs> Don't forget the 900 big finish is that are in between this. <laughs> kidding. Well, Matt Smith hasn't returned for big finish, so I don't think we've got. No, yeah. I mean, we've, we've got, I think, stories narrated by an, by an impersonator, which is just like, like the Companion Chronicles, just like narrated stories about him. But since neither him nor Jenna Coleman, well, yeah, neither him nor Jenna Coleman has returned for Big Finish audios, we haven't gotten anything. Yeah. Well, this is the sort of, this, we sort of hinted at this last week or the show did. Um, but this is sort of the moment where the doctor comes out of his self imposed uh, exile. Exile retirement, we call like it last Yoda, week. I, must f- I failed. I must self-exile now. Yeah. But I, I, I like this. I get the, the reasoning behind it. It's very, uh, it, it makes sense to me. It's like he needs to find out who Clara is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and we, we get a new outfit to go along with that because he's dressed as a monk and he's like, nope, okay, mustn't dress as a monk. And he puts on this, I mean, you can the the spirit of the other of his previous outfit is there, but it's it's not the same. It's got, it's a long purple frock coat now with a purple bow tie and a, a very it's like lilac colored shirt. So it's it's basically just a more formal but darker and more professional looking version of his previous outfit to reflect, sure. I guess, his growing character development. I guess. 
It's interesting how this half of the season seems almost like a soft reboot of the Moffat era, right? New con- new TARDIS interior, new title sequence, new costume, new companion. It's like basically doing it all again, right? Yeah. And I think this episode serves its purpose. Like I said, I don't think it does anything fascinating or interesting with even the characters. Like, Yeah, I didn't really have anything to, to touch back on. Or things I wanted to focus on. I mean, it serves as a vehicle for introducing Clara, and I think in that aspect it succeeds. Uh, I think it showed her to be a competent companion who is going to be different from previous companions since she evidently doesn't want to leave London or still wants to travel with the Doctor. So it's going to be like Amy Roy were at the end with the Doctor picking her up, going on an adventure, and then coming back. She's also just like a lot snarkier than <laughs> she is in in some companion. ways. Moffat's she you know, takes like insert or yeah, something kind of. She takes some aspects from Donna. Was I was gonna say that snarkiness, but she, I think the way Jenna Collin plays it in the story is that there's some attraction between her and the Doctor. Well, I mean that's what it's setting up. You know the the kiss in the last episode, and you know just the. The dialogue in this. Mm-hmm. Here we go again. <laughs> Buckle up. How many stories do we have left in the season? Five, I think. It's like five or six. The, the I know the second half, half, half longer. was longer by, I think, one story or two stories. Wow, the color scheme on One, the wiki. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven more stories this season, oh, plus wow. then the two specials, Day of the Doctor, Time of the Doctor. Yeah, we're coming up on the 50th anniversary. We're yeah. also coming up on the, like... The moment the, our podcast was created. Yeah, not only that, but, like, the moment where, like, around the 50th anniversary specials release, if, if I remember when they're released correctly, is when we, like, first thought of doing, like, this podcast. Yeah. And we started, like, very soon after. Yeah, because the no- special came out November 23rd, 2013. Yeah. Uh, we started thinking of the podcast in December right. of 2013, and we started it in January. Yeah. Yeah. But coming up on the <laughs> moment in Doctor Who history when this podcast was conceived. How fascinating is that? Very fascinating, considering... You know, our I recollection, we would bob out like three, well, three seasons in. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the beginning, out. beginning of the podcast, we would always say like, if we're even still doing this in six months. <laughs> Little did we know, <laughs> five years later, <laughs> five years and and a disproportionately low amount of downloads later. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Considering how much work and and marketing we put into this podcast, I think it's actually it's expected. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever. We just got to get a big name on the show, and then it's all (laughs) uphill from there. As soon as we get, like, Peter Capaldi on the show, just out of nowhere, everybody will be listening. Yeah. That won't. It's not going to happen, is it? That's the thing, is, like, you got to be big to get these big names, but to get big, you got to get the big names. David Tennant has a podcast now. Maybe we can ask him for a crossover. <laughs> Why not? What do we have to lose by asking? Dignity. That was certainly not my dignity. <laughs> what? Is it David no. Tennant's going to email back? Your podcast sucks. All right. That's your opinion. Cool. Or he'll yeah, go back no. and be like, yes. And it's, it's not like we're lowering ourselves by asking him. I and mean, he's already... <laughs> We can already admit that his podcast is higher on the rung of podcasts than ours, so. Most are. <laughs> Especially when I nuked one of our podcasts from <laughs> all of it. <laughs> on that bombshell, you can email us at the thedocumentdecadentvegetable.com. <laughs> Questions, comments, concerns, angry rants, love letters, your thoughts looking ahead on Clara. You can find us on YouTube at Decade of Vegetable. You can find us on Apple Podcasts and Google Play at Trust Your Doctor. Be sure to leave a rating if you liked the show. Check us on Facebook, Trust Your Doctor. Like us on Facebook. Also check us on Twitter at TYD Podcast and follow us on Twitter. And next time we're watching The Rings of... 
I think it's Akaten. I think based on the preview for next week, that's how they said it. Yeah, that. But until then, the end. <laughs>